Hello, and thank you for watching. My name is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. I'm here to create videos for you to help you understand QuickBooks slightly better than you currently do. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them in the chat box. Thank you. In this video, I want to talk to you about Upwork and specifically finding work on Upwork. I'm going to start with the fact that I almost never use Upwork to find work, but I have in the past. I regularly hire on Upwork. And so I thought if you weren't familiar with Upwork, maybe I could just kind of give you a walkthrough. I am in my freelancer profile. My profile describes me as a QuickBooks trainer and who knows what else. What I think will be beneficial is to go through and search for jobs. Let's search for jobs that relate to QuickBooks. So I'm going to search the word QuickBooks. So there's there's a handful of things. We're just going to start this first one. It says seek an accountant to file corporate taxes. I don't do anything with taxes, so I would immediately know this is not for me. But let's pretend that I did. The second thing I'm going to notice is this one star. This employer or this person that is hiring has hired a freelancer and the freelancer found the experience to be difficult. And the freelancer rated the employer or hiring agency as one out of five stars. If you're curious about that, sometimes people leave notes. So let's go ahead and click into this job ad. We're going to scroll down to the bottom and just see the recent history. So the freelancer said, despite numerous attempts, I have not heard back from this client since April. I'm canceling the contract. They canceled the contract in December. So from April to December, they've been trying to get a hold of the client. That feels frustrating. So good to know. Let's look past that one. Let's look past tax filing only because it's not a thing that I do. And I want to be able to talk to you about what we're seeing when we're seeing something we might be able to do or that I can at least speak to. Virtual assistant needed, blah, blah. Me, eh, let's skip it. A full cycle bookkeeping for a growing consulting and home improvement business. This feels like the sort of thing I can talk about. Let's go ahead and click into this ad. All right, so top to bottom, let's look at the ad. The ad was posted two hours ago. I usually don't care when it's posted, but it's nice to know. It says only freelancers located in the US may apply. That's good to know. The first thing that we see is the name of the business and their website. This is the business telling us that they want us to know about their business. This is not the business telling us to go secretly send them a message on their website. I don't believe you're expected to know everything about the business. I do believe that it's a benefit because then you won't start the conversation with, and what does your business do? Okay. So looking for someone who is an expert in QuickBooks online, QuickBooks payroll and QuickBooks time. That's pretty straightforward. I like that. They're looking for someone who can manage the chart of accounts, the data entry, the quarterly, monthly, and weekly aspects of full cycle bookkeeping. Okay. They, they seem organized. Um, full cycle bookkeeping can mean different things to different people. Think about it like a full dinner. When you think of a full dinner, do you think like the soup and the salad followed by the main and some sides and a dessert? What are the components of that? Do you make the same mains that I do? I wouldn't worry about it if you look at this and say, well, I don't, I don't know what they mean by full cycle. I don't know exactly what they want done on a monthly basis. If a client's this organized, the client is likely going to have some way to communicate to you what they'd like done on a regular basis. That doesn't mean you should roll in having no idea what could possibly need to be done, but rather it's, it's going to be okay if you can't read their mind. So they would like you to manage payroll in QuickBooks time. This feels a little funny to me. Admittedly, I don't use QuickBooks time. I used to use it years ago when it was T-Sheets. It was, and it may not still be the case, just a place to track your time. And then payroll was a whole separate module. So now you've got a client who has the idea of what they want, but they're not like 100% an expert. That's okay. The whole reason they're considering hiring someone is because they're not an expert. In fact, they've gone so far as to say they're looking to hire an expert. 
So this is great. This is your chance to shine. They're going to give you some incomplete or slightly skewed information and ask for you to help them fix a thing. So I love any chances I get to shine. Help set up and manage contractor payments. Awesome. Another chance to shine. It then goes on to say program payments and financial management of public and private funding sources for new home improvement. Now we're getting into the area that I know less about. You might take a look before contacting this potential employer or potential client and just see what can you learn from Googling. If you can learn anything useful, you can include that in your apply now cover letter. This business is going to get a ton of people who apply. It's going to be people who they just throw something together and say, oh, I'm, I'm just going to apply and see what happens. Couldn't hurt. No big deal. They're going to get a bunch of garbage. And I know this because it happens to me. If you can set yourself apart by saying, oh, I noticed you're curious about this, you know, energy retrofit, you know, funding sources I've found or I understand that, you know, something that says, you know, anything about this thing, it's going to set you apart. OK, so coordinate with accountant. That means like maybe the CFO, maybe the tax preparer and the legal department for accounting compliance and internal controls. That's great. I, that either tells me they have internal controls in place or they're looking to set some up. Either way, if you're familiar with different options for internal controls, this is your chance to set yourself apart by saying, hey, I totally get it. Inter internal controls are a big deal. Here are some ways that I've seen it done or here's some ideas I have or I'm accustomed to X, Y, and Z. If you're not sure what internal controls mean, I encourage you to look up anything written by a lady named Dawn Brolin. She refers to herself as the designated motivator. She's amazing. She does a lot of work in the fraud space. I like her because she's very energetic, very pep talky, really a delight to listen to. She has likely written at least one article, but probably many about internal controls. Just take a look at her online presence and see, is there anything you can include in your cover letter to make yourself stand out? So number six says to set up templates, meaning they're asking you to create a thing that doesn't exist. This is your chance to shine. Generate and review prior to each payroll, blah, blah, blah. Reports such as blah, blah, blah. Fantastic. If, if you're not sure how to set up these reports, I know that the word says templates, but really I think it's reports. Take a look at some YouTube videos and get comfortable with this. And then the seventh option says support finance and administration by managing end of year reconciliations and adjusting entries in coordination with the accountant. Fantastic. They've got a person and that person really needs to have the bookkeeping straightened out and perfect and amazing. That's not a person who's going to look to catch you doing something wrong. That's a person who's going to be helpful and be like, here's the stuff you need. Let me know if you get stuck. Thank you so much for taking the lead on this. Preparation of W-2s. That's going to be fine. They're using a payroll software. You, you probably don't have to do anything for the W-2s to be prepared. Prepare the 1099s. Great. There's lots of options for doing that. If you're already a person who prepares 1099s, you can include in your cover letter, hey, I'm totally comfortable preparing 1099s. I use QuickBooks. I use Track 1099. I use Tax 1099, whatever the case. You're not saying, oh, dear prospective client, you have to use the thing I use. You're just saying, I've got this. I've been doing this a whole bunch. I can use whatever software you like, or if you don't have one in mind, here's the one I'll use. Moving over to the right, it says that the client, their payment method is not verified. Who cares? This client can't hire you until their payment method is verified. It just means in order to set up this job ad, they didn't connect and verify their payment. If they like you and you like them and you guys agree to work together, they'll set up their payment. Upwork isn't going to just let this job commence without getting a chance to get their cut. The last thing I want to do is just scroll down to the bottom. Take a look. Questions to be answered when submitting your proposal. What is your experience? Describe your experience. Describe your proficiency with Excel. You've got that. You know how to do that stuff. 
when we get further down and it says proposals less than five, I don't care if it said proposals 1000. If this person or this company is looking to hire, they're going to keep looking until they find the right person. And if they get a thousand proposals and a thousand of them are crappy, they're going to keep looking. Maybe they hire an Upwork, maybe they hire somewhere else. Don't look at this and say, oh, I couldn't possibly apply. They've had too many applicants. It doesn't matter. The right applicant could be you. I don't know this firm. I don't know this business. I'm not going to apply for this job. I got other stuff I need to do. What I wanted to do, though, is just walk you through how you can take a look at a job ad, how you can set yourself apart, and the different things that the job ad might be asking you for. If you find this job ad and you apply and you don't get it and you feel discouraged, I'm just going to let you know a couple of things. In the process of applying for the job ad, you got really good at looking at the job and identifying how your skills relate to what they've posted. You've written some sort of custom cover letter for that. You're identifying ways that you can stand apart, things that you can bring up in conversation with other potential clients. I hope this video has been helpful. I'm going to try to run through a couple of different Upwork posts just to give newbies a different, like a different lens to look at the Upwork post and to identify what they should go after and how they might be able to describe themselves as awesome, how they might be able to fill in the gaps in their knowledge. If my team or I can help you, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you'd like to see more videos like this, just leave a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see me do. I'm happy to get creative and do whatever I can to help. Thank you so much and have a great day.